Welcome to Objective 2 of Unit 4 of Intangibles and Goodwill, Section 4, Accounting 3310. In this objective, we'll identify and value intangibles and the unidentifiable intangible of goodwill. There are many items essential to a business and available to buy and sell that have no tangible presence. Think about these two examples. When Hostess Corporation liquidated, the brand Twinkies was a valuable intangible asset that it could sell. Bristol-Myers Squibb has a recent surge in its stock price because one particular pharmaceutical shows great promise against cancer, and Bristol-Myers Squibb holds a patent giving it exclusivity for 20 years. How are intangibles recognized on financial statements? Our objective here is that you'll be able to identify and value intangible assets and goodwill. Intangible assets are rights or claims to expected benefits that tend to be contractual in nature rather than physical in nature. They include things like patents and trademarks and copyrights, but also things like customer lists and franchises. A patent is a grant by the federal government to an inventor bestowing the exclusive right to produce and sell a given invention for 20 years. The economic life of a patent, however, may be much less than 20 years. Copyrights are the exclusive rights to reproduce and sell a book, musical composition, film, or similar creative item. Copyrights rights last for the life of the author plus 70 years, but the economic life is often no longer than two or three years. Trademarks are distinctive identifications of a manufactured product or of a service taking the form of a name, a sign, a slogan, a logo, or an emblem. Examples are trade names, trade brands, secret formulas, or similar items. They can be renewed in 10-year increments as long as they're being used. The economic life then depends on the length of use. Franchises or licenses are intangible assets because they're privileges granted by a government, manufacturer, or distributor to sell a product or service in accordance with specified conditions. An example is a local McDonald's franchise. The franchisee pays for the right to use the name and acquire branded products such as cups and bags and to share in advertising and special promotions. In return, the franchisee must meet the standards set forth by McDonald's. Customer-related intangibles include things like customer lists in our current age of data. A database of prospects or current customers has value. The useful life is based on the projected benefit from the database. A residual value based on usefulness of the database to others may exist when it's no longer needed by the company itself. The acquisition cost of an intangible asset is its purchase price, for example, buying a patent from a scientist. It also is the direct cost of self-development of an intangible asset, which include registration costs, the legal costs of defending a patent or copyright, and any contracting costs. For example, if a patent is based on a discovery by the company itself, then the only amount of value on the books of the company for the patent are these somewhat incidental costs of registration, legal, and contracting costs. If it's the result of research and development, that research and development was expensed at the time that it occurred, and so it's not available now to be part of the value of the patent. Direct costs of an intangible asset are not really related to the fair value of the intangible, so self-developed intangibles are usually undervalued on the company's financial statements. Some self-developed intangible assets are not shown on the balance sheet at all. Things like advertising costs are expensed when they occur, even though they may promote a brand and make it more valuable. Likewise, as we just mentioned, research and development costs are expensed in the period in which they occur and are not capitalized, even though they may result in future assets. Goodwill is a distinctive intangible. It's considered an unidentifiable intangible asset, and it only exists when it's purchased in a business acquisition. 
Economically, goodwill is the excess return that a company can generate from a set of assets such that it is willing to pay more than the fair value of the net identifiable assets. When a company develops its own goodwill, it is not recorded in the accounting records and it's not placed on the balance sheet. Goodwill must be purchased to be an asset on the books of a company. Goodwill is valued as the acquisition cost paid for a business that a company purchases minus the fair value of the net identifiable assets of that business. When buying a business, the purchaser completes due diligence to examine the company being purchased. In this process, the purchaser will determine what the fair value of the net identifiable assets are. We use the term net assets because in buying a business, the company owns both the assets and all of the liabilities of the company. So the difference between the assets and the liabilities purchased is the net assets. We call it identifiable because it includes everything except the goodwill. Goodwill is not separately valued. Instead, it's calculated. Once we know the fair value of the net identifiable assets, we'll subtract that from the acquisition cost. And whatever is left over, that we're going to call goodwill. Let's take a look at an acquisition. Here we have a parent company that's purchasing a subsidiary, and the subsidiary has this trial balance on the date it's being acquired. Now, first of all, the book value of all of these assets on the books of the subsidiary are really not relevant at this point. Instead, it's the fair value of these assets that the company is purchasing. So cash always has a fair value equal to its book value, of course. But here, the company who's doing the purchasing says that they believe the accounts receivable are only worth 11000 rather than the 12000 that the company has on their books. But on the other hand, the inventory is more valuable than it was on the books of the company. Equipment, buildings, land here are all more valuable than on the books of the subsidiary, which is the normal situation. And the liabilities are, are the same value as they would be to the subsidiary. This gives, in this case, a total fair value of net identifiable assets of $359,000. Now, the amount of goodwill then depends on the acquisition price. If the payment for the company is exactly $359,000, then the parent company has paid exactly the fair value of the net identifiable assets, and there's no goodwill involved. If the company pays less than $359,000, then the company is said to have gotten a bargain Bargains are somewhat unusual, but they can happen for several reasons. Typically because of transaction factors, such as maybe there being very few bidders for the company, or maybe there's a rushed sale. That bargain is recognized as a gain in the period of the acquisition, and again, no goodwill is present. But if the company pays more than $359,000 for the company, then that additional amount above the fair value of the net identifiable assets, that's the measure of goodwill. And it's recorded as a separate additional asset on the books of the company. Let's think about the economic view of goodwill. That is, goodwill represents to an economist the abnormal return that a particular company can gather from a particular set of assets above and beyond what anyone else would be able to obtain as a return from those assets. So here, let's calculate what might be that economic value of goodwill. Let's assume a parent company determines that they're going to be able to get expected annual cash flows from the subsidiary of $40,000 each year going on in perpetuity. The appropriate discount rate, let's assume, is 20%, and the cash flows are expected to grow at 10% into the future. Estimating the company value, we would take the 40000 divided by uh, the 
discount rate minus the growth rate. And this would be equivalent to a present value of $400,000. That's the value. That's how much the parent company would be willing to pay in order to get cash flows of $40,000 into perpetuity, growing at a 10% rate when interest rates are about 20%. If the company pays $400,000 for this company we've been talking about, when the fair value of the net identifiable assets are $359,000, then there's $41,000 of goodwill uh, that is going to be recorded on the books of the company. Coming up with the acquisition price is not really a part of this accounting class. Uh, that is, tends to be a finance topic or a management topic to come up with what price would you pay to purchase a company. Once we know the acquisition price, though, uh, the accountants will be involved in valuing the fair value of the net identifiable assets, and goodwill then is the result of having those two estimates. This is the end of this objective that's introduced you to intangible assets, including goodwill, on the books of a company. Thank you.